Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing today? I'm doing well here. Thank you for asking. I'm sure you were asking. Almost certain. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about some video games. Just a few of my all-time favorite video games. Uh... Going all the way back to the Atari 2600, all the way up to, oh, the PS3, uh, Xbox 360, uh, Xbox 360 era. Um, I have not bought into this generation of consoles, the PS4, the Xbox One, the Switch. I didn't buy into this generation, and this is the first generation I've not bought into since the Atari 2600. Uh, I've had... Pretty much all the main consoles, uh, and I'll go over a few of them actually in the video. But uh, right now, um, we're going to talk about a couple of games that I love and that still to this day hold up and uh, really d define the genre or the system. Uh, just the time that they were out and uh, I actually have a poster here that I'll show you uh, it's a poster that I made up a um, year ago two years ago I'm not even certain I actually have a paper a sales slip uh, so I could go actually get the date um, we're gonna start with a game called Pitfall for the 2600 now I was a young lad at the time, but I recall playing Pitfall, and it was a big deal. It was a big game. Uh, I'm not sure the actual goal of the game, but I do know that it had a timer, and uh, I assume if you just stayed alive long enough, uh, you won. So you could practically just stand still, uh, probably, I don't know, but I'm sure you go for points as well. It's been a long time since I played it. Uh, Pitfall's a good old game. Um, we have, let's see, what else am I looking at here? I'm going to jump up to the NES. The old NES. There was several games that I liked for that system, and there were several games that I could beat on that system no problem. Um, one of those games was Kid Icarus. Uh, another one of those games was The Goonies 2. Another one was Rygar. Another one was Ninja Gaiden. Karnov. Uh, Faxanadu. We have, let's see, Super Mario Brothers, of course. Uh, one and two. Um, anything else? Uh, I think that's about all I have listed on the, uh, of course, Zelda. And we have uh, Zelda 2, and uh, yeah, so those were all games that really brought back memories. There was a ton of games that I beat, and I used to be good at, I mean, there, it was a different time back then. You had to be good at games. Nowadays, it, it don't take quite the skill level. So, back then, it was a big deal if you could beat some of these games. Um, and of course, I'm not looking at the camera. Sorry, I'm kind of looking at this poster I've got. <clears throat> but, uh, man, Faxanadu is one of those games that I just, I, I love it, and I love to hate it. I never got anywhere in it. It's, uh, the mechanics of it, like, kind of suck. You jump about this high, you can't hardly jump over any enemies. Your sword reaches about that far from you, and it's annoying. So I never really got too far on that game, but it's one that I love, I adore, and, and to the end of this, and to the end of my life, I'll love that game. And I actually have it. Uh, I actually have a boxed version of it. it it's in rough condition, but eh, it's it's boxed, and I don't really do a, a lot of a, a lot of collecting or anything, but I just so happen to have that um we'll talk about the original super mario brothers for the nes 
Uh, the first time I ever beat that game, I was at a friend's house, and it was like 5 o'clock in the morning, and I was the only one that was still awake. And I beat that game, and I left it on the whole time until everybody woke up so they could see that I won, I believe. I believe that's what happened, or I ended up just turning it off eventually and then redoing it, and I eventually beat it again. But I remember beating that game, Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, I beat that game at home. I remember I was in the living room playing, and my mom was my mom was actually getting involved, and she was, oh my god, oh my god, Michael, uh, uh, and I was like, mom, be quiet, you're gonna get me killed. Now, for me to say something like that to my mom was a big deal. I mean, I didn't say it hateful, but in my, you know, where, how I grew up, you didn't really say stuff like that too often, but she understood, and she didn't take it seriously, and even up until the, the day she died, you know, we would she'd bring it up or whatever and and laugh about it and and uh, it was just a, a good memory. I remember beating that and that was a big deal. Zelda, of course, The Legend of Zelda for the NES, biggest game in the world. I mean, everybody in the world played that game. That was uh, an amazing game, and I've actually. Started again. No, no, I started a, um, a link to the past is what I've started on the uh, SNES Mini, and I, I'm a little ways on that, not very far, but anyway. Um, Karnov, I used to beat like that. I had the Nintendo Advantage, so once I got used to that joystick and doing a lot of stuff with that, that really came into its own on uh, Ninja Gaiden. Gaiden, Gaiden, I say Ninja Gaiden. Uh, you know how you do that back and forth with the D-pad on your normal controller to go up a wall? Way easier with that uh, joystick. And I'd get up there, you know, I, I was able to move around a lot easier, and it just it, it made it so much better. And I could beat that game no problem. And I, I've heard people say, man, that game is so hard. That game is so hard, blah, blah, blah. I used to go through that game no problem. Like on practically one one life. Um, let's see, let's talk about another little game that I like to call Twisted Metal 2. What an amazing game. Now, of course, my love for the PlayStation 1 started with, uh, in the Twisted Metal series, it started with Twisted Metal 1. Loved it, great game, amazing, but then when Twisted Metal 2 came along, it took the game up. Uh, like 10 notches and still to this day there's not a Twisted Metal that's as good as Twisted Metal 2. It just did everything right uh, from the level design to the music to the characters to the atmosphere to the controls and the controls are crazy. I mean you'll jump in the air and you can float and flutter around and do all kind of stuff but once you learn the mechanics on Twisted Metal 2, you can fly through them levels and go uh, in turbo, and and you can actually control things pretty well. Amazing game. Countless hours on that game. Uh, I was amazing at that game. Very good. Um, let's see. Let's talk about a game called SSX. For the PlayStation 2, amazing game. Uh, what a what a, a sleeper hit that was. I remember getting the PlayStation 2, and really the launch library of the PlayStation 2 kind of sucked. Let's be honest. But then a, a, a buddy of mine bought my actually bought my son SSX. I don't know why. It was my PlayStation 2. Just kidding. But uh. Yeah, I pretty much ended up taking over that game, and I became really good at the, uh, well, I was actually good at the racing part, and I got really good at the trick part. Um, and that game was really hard to get a big score on, and I think my highest score on that one was like 691. 691-ish or something like that thousand, which is a, a, a lot of points for, it, for that game. 
love it. I, it was amazing. The levels, the music, the the everything. The only thing that it needs to be absolutely perfect is better snowflake detection and better control for the board when you're in the air so you don't wreck you know as easily they did correct that a little bit in uh, SSX Tricky but the snowflake detection is still uh, pretty iffy there's times you'll go directly through a snowflake and not get the points so and, and that can totally mess up your whole run uh, let's talk about a little game called we're gonna go back uh, for the Sega Genesis and it is Golden Axe um, a buddy of mine and me used to play this all the time he he had a Genesis I got a Genesis uh, the story behind that is um, they were a wealthy family and uh, we went out of town me uh, me and my buddy Rick and his mom we went out of town to Paducah I think it was and uh, and I always bit my fingernails. And uh, we were at the store and all that. And he was wanting to get one. And and uh, and his mom offered to buy me a Sega Genesis if I quit biting my fingernails. Now, of course, that took me many, 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 many years after to finally stop biting my fingernails. Uh, November of 2007, to be precise. Yes, I remember that because it was a big day for me. Uh, but anyhow, me and my buddy used to play Golden Axe all the time and Altered Beast all the time. And we would go through them and, just, and we loved them and uh, beat them all the time with ease and just enjoyed them. Uh, that, that's, uh, those are, I guess the word is bittersweet uh, memories. Uh, he actually died um, back in 2000 early 2018 no he died back in early 2017 god I hate it I done forgot but uh he was my little buddy man I loved him to death and uh, he just uh, and uh, what my channel is also based around is depression anxiety that type of stuff and uh, pretty much depression ended up killing him he uh pretty much drank himself to death and his liver and all that stuff and just it was uh, it was bad and I didn't really know because you know we weren't hanging out as adults really anymore we kept on it kept in touch once in a while on Facebook and that but uh so yeah that's the, those games have a special memory in my heart because I love him and I love his family and I you know I still love him to this day and uh, very good people Rick Rainey Love you to death. I'm sorry that you're gone. Love you, buddy. Um, Alright, we're going to jump to another two games that are very, very similar that came out around the same time. Uh, one is, and I, and I played them 99% for PlayStation 2. Uh, Unreal Tournament and Quake 3 Revolution. Love those games. Fun, quick twitch uh, shooters. I really wish they'd make a comeback. I love those games. Uh, uh, one awesome games. I did originally have like the original uh, Unreal for the PC many years ago, like '99 or something like that. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't play a lot of that, and I didn't play any any sort of the uh, like uh, what's it called the battle mode or whatever. I tried. I was mostly into the story mode on that one. I never got nowhere on it. I sucked at it, and, but I've still got it, actually. I believe up in the, my little collection. Um, let's go to DDR Max Two for the PlayStation Two. I first got introduced to the dancing game at, in an arcade. I got on there. I didn't know what I was doing. My kids didn't know what they were doing. My nephew didn't know what he was doing. So we just tinkered around with it and was like, eh, okay, left. But it was in my memory and in my blood at that point. And instantly, you know, once uh, once I got home and I was doing research and, and all this stuff, instantly I found that there was this big uh, club, you know, DDR Freak, 
where people are making their own pads and it's a big deal, it's a tournament and it's a huge game. So uh, very quickly I ended up building my own metal pads and I've built like two or three different sets of them. Uh, right now I just have one single pad that, uh, that I've built a long time ago and it still works. I don't play very often. Like once a year I'll break it out and play for a little bit. Um, wonderful game. I mean hours hours of enjoyment all of us my whole family even my mom tried playing um, amazing amazing game it gets you up it gets you dancing it gets you active and the, the music's good and it's a lot of fun amazing game I recommend it to everyone to have at least tried it uh, now I'm not gonna go over every single game I have here I don't believe and my video will be 10 hours long but I'm going to go over to Medal of Honor Spearhead, uh, Medal of Honor Allied Assault Spearhead uh, for the computer, for the PC. When I got introduced to that game, pretty much when it came out, that game was absolutely mind-blowingly amazing to me. Uh, I played that game so much, I knew all the levels inside and out, I could practically move around without even looking at the screen. Um, I got so good that I was uh, at one point I was in a clan and I just kind of got bored with that because in my opinion I just got so good it just got you know like eh, not a big deal so that game I mean I can't even tell you the time the effort the hours the the sleepless nights I mean I, I, I probably put in 48 hours straight playing that game before countless times there's no telling um, amazing, amazing game, and I still have it to this day uh, that I can play if I want. Uh, which kind of goes on with this one. I'll say I'll go up to the Xbox 360, Call of Duty 2. When that game came out, it blew my mind. I've never played a game, you know, I, I looked for a game like Medal of Honor on the computer that I can enjoy on the console, and and, and, and it wasn't really there. Um, but I'll get into another game that is amazing as well. But Call of Duty 2 was the closest thing that I found to Medal of Honor for the computer. And I played it on the 360. Awesome game. Good matches. Levels are great. I love all the levels. Lots of good time playing that game. Online and split screen. Uh, with my family and that. With my kids and nephews and that great great game love it to this day it's gonna lead me over to my favorite game of the original OG Xbox and that is Halo Combat Evolved amazing just jaw-dropping crazy wonderful game when that game came out and I booted that up for the first time man I was it was instant love and just so you know I do have my original Xbox uh, from the day one launch here in my town at our Walmart I was first in line and I waited in line probably nine hours eight nine hours um, and the story with that also is I got Halo I got the I got Halo I got the memory card and I got an extra controller, I believe that was the third thing, like a week before the Xbox even launched. Of course, little did we know, we didn't need the memory card. I mean, you kind of knew, but you didn't know, so you were dumb enough to buy it. Never used it, couldn't even fit a game on it. Um, anyhow, I still have all my original stuff. As of today, it all still works. Man, I just love it. The music the gameplay, the atmosphere, the levels, the the you know, the Master Chief and the Cortana and all this stuff and just beautiful wonderful game and uh the Halo series is the only reason I'm going to get back into buying uh consoles. I'm going to get the new Xbox when it comes out in 2020 because it's uh, uh releasing it's launching with a a new Halo game. So I'm going to get back into that and absolutely love that game to death. I don't even care about the remasters and all that, how much better it looks. 
it looks great, yeah. But the original, I, it, to me, I'm not a graphics whore. Uh, my eyes don't bleed just because I look at old games. And to me, the original Halo still looks perfect. It still plays perfect. It's absolutely fine. Beautiful, wonderful game. And what a great launch that that Xbox had with that game. Um, let's see. What else do we got? Let's go on and look at... Oh... We'll do one more, and this one here's an arcade. Miss Pac-Man. Love Miss Pac-Man. I remember going to the laundromat and playing it. I remember going to the arcades and playing it. There was a Miss Pac-Man machine everywhere, or Pac-Man, whichever. Um, I prefer Miss Pac-Man, and actually a lot of people do. It's really the better of the two games. Um, it's a little faster. It moves a little bit faster, and it's just a little bit better overall game. Uh, just what a time, you know, to be a child and these things are just coming out. You know, I was at the forefront of all that. You know, I'm fixing to be 48. And, uh, you know, I was at the forefront of video games and all that. So, it's just what an amazing time. And, uh, sorry about that, but my nose itches all the time. Um, but just to know that I was alive at that time whenever everything was happening... I'm so lucky and so blessed to have been born when I was. Love it. Um, what other game will I look at? Let's see. Let's look at the original Tomb Raider for PlayStation 2. Wow. Was that game and the other three games really amazing or what? Um, the, graphic, um, the graphics were iffy. The controls sucked. Let's be honest. The controls were like, whew, and if you try to play it today, it's rough. But man, for its time, God, that was an adventure game. Those are the way uh, Tomb Raider games should be. And uh, there's another one or two games at least that are that released for the PlayStation 2 that are really good as well uh, in the Tomb Raider series. Um, the new ones for the 360 and PS4 and you know the new all the new one uh, the new two that have been released I played and beat the first one that came out a couple times I mean it's good it's good for what it is but it it to me it pales in comparison to what the old ones are to what Tomb Raider's supposed to be about uh, there's too much action too much gun too much uh just, you know, it, it, it's kind of crossed that boundary, kind of like Resident Evil did. But uh, the original, amazing. And speaking of Resident Evil, you can't bring up video games without bringing up Resident Evil. That was one of the two games that I ever seen first played on the PlayStation 1. Back in 96, 95, 96, whichever it was. Um... I walked down, we went to my, my wife's parents' house, and her brother was in the basement, and of course the basement was dark, and they had a old school big screen TVs, you know, the big, huge 300 pound ones, uh, it was down there, and I walked down them stairs, and I was, and I seen what he was playing, and I was just like, what in the world is that, that is insane, oh my god. And he was playing Resident Evil that day, and he was playing uh, Twist of Metal that day. I ran out and got a PlayStation 1. Uh, just amazing game, man. That, that game brought a survival horror into the picture, and uh, it's, it's owned it since. Now, there's some other good games out there since, like Silent Hill and some other stuff for newer consoles and, and all that that I've actually seen my youngest son play. He still plays them. He loves those. Um, but Resident Evil, man, I mean, just classic, you know. Just amazing, amazing game, man. The atmosphere, the sound effects, the opening of the doors, the going down the steps, uh, the zombies, the... Uh, I mean, just how... how crazy of a time that was you know that was just that was a a new turning point for video games 
kind of like it's like when the NES came out, you know, over the, you know, after the Atari, it was just a new turning point, you know, it was just amazing to watch. Um, I'm gonna say oddly enough, I don't really have, I don't think I have anything on my poster from the N64. Uh, I feel kind of bad about that, but I do have Mario, and Mario is on all the consoles. And it was just, I made a poster basically just kind of commemorating games that I love, and characters I love, and what have you. So, but I don't see anything from the N64 era, but of course you got to mention Mario 64. You know, I had that. I had uh, Star Wars, Shadows of the Empire, I had Turok, um, I had a couple other games. I didn't get a huge amount of games for it, because I hated the controller. Horrible controller. But I got the N64 not long after it launched. Um, good games, you know, good system. It, it, it's just Nintendo don't know how to make a controller until today. Finally, they know how to make a controller. Um... So I'm not really bringing up anything about the N64 because I just, you know, I wasn't a part of it. Uh, I'm going to bring up one game from a system that a lot of people didn't have. And that is the TurboGrafx-16. Um, I was literally the only person that I knew that even had one in my town. Um, it was not a big selling popular console. Amazing. It was really a cool console. Let's face it. Uh, playing a game on a card it is, is great. That's really cool. But uh, Bonk's, Bonk's Revenge is the main game that I remember from that system. I only had probably two or three games for it as well. For some reason, I just didn't. Uh, I went through a period where I wasn't buying a lot of games and stuff. But um, Bonk's Revenge, I remember. I'll always remember playing it for the TurboGrafx-16, and I beat it, and it, it was a good game, man. TurboGrafx-16 is an underrated console, uh, and I believe that they're making a TurboGrafx Mini. I could be wrong, but I think I've heard rumor of that, and if they do, I'm getting it. So, that's a, that's a cool system, and, and I've gotten rid of my original old systems like that. I don't know what I did, if I pawned them off, sold them, whatever, but, uh, uh, yeah, I just don't have them. Um, I'm gonna go and talk about Splinter Cell, the original uh, Splinter Cell, and I'm gonna talk about the one for the original Xbox. Why? Because it's the definitive, most incredible version of the game. Uh, the PlayStation 2 version, sucked. I mean, it's bad. Uh, the Nintendo GameCube version is next decent, but the Xbox version is top notch. Man, that game is amazing. I remember when I finally beat it. Man, that game was so hard. To me, it was just so hard, and I'm really slow at it. I crept around every corner. It took me an hour to move a foot. Um, beautiful game, beautiful. Uh, the first three games in that series, amazing. Great games. Uh, I, I have them still. They're great games. Now, those are some stealth games, and they are done really well. Graphically, to me, still beautiful. Amazing. Um, again, don't let your eyes bleed because things are not in 4K. Uh amazing game like there's not a whole lot more you can say it's just wow what a time to to be a gamer to have something like that and you pop it in you're just like blown away of just the, the how they use the the shadows and the and all that it was just so beautiful uh what game next let's see something i'm gonna talk about I'm going to talk about Oblivion. Now I got Oblivion for the 360. Uh, that is the kind of game that I've always wanted to play, but I always sucked at them. I just sucked at them. I had the original Morrowind or whatever it was that came out for the original Xbox. Um, of course it came out for PC as well, but I had the one for the original Xbox. I still actually have it. 
Uh, I never could get anywhere in that game. I mean, I'd start it up and I'd be killed by a woman with a spoon. And I'm sitting there hitting her with knives and everything. That game, it, everybody loves that game, but it sucks. Let's be honest. I mean, you, you just die. You don't know what you're doing. It's, it's just, it's at that point where I just can't do it. I can't be comfortable doing it. But I got Oblivion for the 360 when it launched. Uh, when that game came out. Loved it. I mean, I could play it instantly. Uh, it, it didn't have that difficulty to it where you just die when something attacks you. You actually have a fighting chance. Nice big open world. Uh, you can travel from one side to the other. Great game. It's good for people like me who are who who love games and who love who want to try those kind of games, uh, but they don't want the extreme difficulty. And I'm looking at my at my thing here and I don't see one game that I wanted to talk about and I actually don't have it on there. That sucks. Anyway, Oblivion and Skyrim. Uh, I got I got Skyrim for the PC actually. And uh, I beat Oblivion and I beat Skyrim. Now if there was extra packs and different stuff that you could buy for them, I don't know. I didn't I didn't buy anything extra for them or download anything extra. I beat the game as is and to me that's beating it. Uh, that's the same thing with the game I'm looking for on my poster, and that's Diablo 3 for the PlayStation 3. I got that, and I love that game. That was a great game. Me and my wife actually played that game together from beginning to the end. Uh, I had the I had the version that had the uh, first like uh, extra pack or whatever, like Eternal Darkness or or Black or it was something. I can't remember. You guys will know. Um, I had that one. Great game, easy to pick up and play and learn, and uh, really, really a good time to play with someone, split screen, uh, I think it was split screen, I don't even know, it could have been on the same screen, I don't remember, but uh, great game, we beat that, and I know there's another pack or two that came out with that, uh, but we beat it, we beat what was on there, and so great game we had a really good time doing that she's not a big gamer or nothing so uh, it was nice for us to get together and do something like that um what else anything else i'm gonna bring uh, another little game up called cameo for the xbox 360 i got that when it came out as well heck i think that was launch and i got it at launch um that's a really cool game that's a beautiful game really uh, underrated and in need of a sequel. It, it needs another game. Uh, the character models, the the uh, the fighting mechanics, the different characters that you can be, the um, the surroundings, the environment and everything, beautiful. Man, that's just, the music is it's a really well put together game and you can actually get soundtrack for that and it's got a pretty good soundtrack to it really really a great game that still today holds up it's a beautiful game you ought to, you ought to play it if you haven't uh, beat that as well um, I have a, a few other games on here I'm not going to talk about the rest of them you kind of get the idea of where I'm at um, I'll tell you the I'll tell you the systems that I've had. Uh, I've had the Atari Atari 2600 back pretty much when it came out. Uh, then I got the uh, the NES um, for Christmas one year too. No, that wasn't for Christmas. The Atari we got for Christmas. Uh, the NES I just got. I remember it being on. Uh, my mom put it in layaway for me at Walmart, and we paid a little bit on it here and there. And, whatever and then I remember her saying you want to go get it out and I was like holy crap I mean I remember that to this day I remember that and uh, what, what a time and what a great mom I had and my grandma um, so I had the NES um, I didn't get into the Sega until the Genesis so I had the NES I had 
uh, the TurboGrafx-16, I had the Sega Genesis, I had the Super Nintendo, I had the PlayStation 1, I had a Nintendo 64, I had uh, Xbox, PlayStation 2, GameCube, I've had 360, PS3, the Wii, I've had, is that, is that where I left? I think that's where I stopped. I stopped on the 360, PS3, Wii era. I never got the Wii U because it was ignorant to even get. Um, I think I named all my systems I've had. There was one time that I almost got like the CDI and there was one more time that I almost got the uh, Atari Jaguar, uh, you know, way back when they came out, uh, but I just never, never got those. Um, I never got into the Dreamcast. I played it uh, a friend of mine's one time and I don't know, I just wasn't that impressed and I didn't, I wasn't crazy about the controller either. Um... What else? Yeah, that's about it. But uh, I am buying in, like I said, uh, I am going to buy the new Xbox when it comes out in 2020. So I hope to get back into video gaming at least just a little bit. So, guys, that's kind of just a little run through of some games I love. Huge passion, huge love, uh, memories, uh, everything about those games. I'll show you the uh, the poster that I made up. Uh, like I said, I made it up about it two years ago, probably. But uh, here it is. Start up here. Sorry, I got my camera on a tripod, so I got to kind of angle it. And we got those there at the bottom. Yeah. So that's it. Um, no, it's not attached there really. I just have it kind of taped up there for the video. It's on my TV. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, that's a little poster I have made up. Uh, I, I still need to get a frame for it. I don't know why I haven't by now. It's a big 20 by 30, so it's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, guys, that's a little video. I just thought I'd share a little bit of information with you, tell you a little bit about my video game history and some games I think about and I love and and uh, just kind of where my passion lies and my plans to get back in, uh, hopefully a little bit. So, guys, I appreciate you watching. I know it's been a long video, but hey, there's a lot of games you got to talk about. So, uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I appreciate it. Remember, I do all this for free. No monetization, no ads, nor do I plan to at any time. Um, so, yeah. Don't forget, please, to get up, get out, get ready and do it to it. Even when talking about video games. We'll see you guys later. Have a good day.